So first off, I want to say thanks for taking the time to to speak with me. Yeah, and, no problem. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed Margo. I, I thought it was a lot of fun, and I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, awesome, how's man. Your I appreciate day you watching. Uh, it's cool. It's you know, it's it's insanely hot here in Southern California, uh, but you know, uh, it's good to sort of get you know, on the train of the movie coming out, and I'm excited for everyone to catch it. So uh, it's going to be a good week, I think. Awesome. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get right into it. Yeah. So what drew you to the script? You know, I'm an 80s horror fanatic, uh, and I love movies that take place in houses or almost one location. Uh, Evil Dead 2 is a huge uh, sort of thing for me growing up. Uh, so to be able to do a movie in a house uh, and sort of take technology, which is also another love of mine, uh, and have technology be the one taking out these kids, uh, seemed like a killer time. So uh, that instantly drew me to the material. Uh, and then I think just the the deaths kept me into the material. Uh, the characters kept me moving through the material. So uh, it was something to me that just sort of clicked. Cool. Uh, I guess the next thing I wanted to ask was what, or was there any films that inspired your way of making this film? Yeah, I looked at movies like Cabin in the Woods, which I feel like does a great job with, you know, young people in horror and, and how they deal with tropes of horror and sort of flipping it on their head. Uh, and then I looked at a movie like Ex Machina, um, which is, you know, super stylized um, and has a really certain point of view with technology. And I just wanted to see if there was a way that I could sort of marry the two. Uh, and that's what I sort of tried to do. Right on. Those are those are some great movies to be inspired by. Uh, do you have a favorite horror movie by any chance? Yeah, yeah. My favorite horror movie of all time is probably Jaws. Um, you know, it was something that I watched as a kid and it scared the shit out of me. Uh, and it continues to scare me. It scares my kids. Uh, so it's a movie that like I just you know fell in love with instantly. Um, and then it, and then I sort of it was sort of a gateway for me. It's like. Once I watched that, it was like, okay, the next thing is, like I said, Evil Dead. And then it was The Exorcist. And then it just sort of rolled down from there for me for just, you know, diving into horror. Yeah, that, I, I love Jaws as well. Uh, I could definitely see some maybe Evil Dead vibes in there with Margo oh, as sure. well. Yeah, 100%. That was something that I, I you know, I've loved for <laughs> many, many years. And so it, it sort of inspires me every time I'm making films and to try to see how I can do some of the fun camera work and, and uh, have some fun with the way the characters are, are, you know, getting taken out. So it definitely has some fun vibes like that. Right on. Uh, how much of the film was practical effects as opposed to CGI? You know, I think it was probably like 70% is practical. Um, you know, obviously we had to do something. Well, we went in going, we're going to make the whole movie practical. Um, we even, uh, 3D printed and puppeteered the, the arms that are in the film. Uh, but of course, uh, you get there on set and they just don't work. Uh, and they're not working at all like you need them to work. So we had to move to, uh, you know, visual effects for that in the same way with the sort of nexus room of Margot and the brain. We, we wanted that to be uh, as practical as possible. But once we got in there, things just weren't working or we just didn't have enough time because the movie was shot in so, so quickly. Um, so, but the things that were practical and that worked really great, I thought the guys did fantastic with, um, and like I said, I'm an eighties horror fanatic. So the more I could do on screen, the more I could do practically was the mission. Uh, it really came down to, uh, what, what didn't work or didn't have enough time we had to, to push to later. But, uh, for the most part, you know, a lot of it was very practical. Yeah, I, I'm actually a my favorite horror movie is probably The Thing. So I, I really love seeing practical effects in modern film. Yeah. So that that's awesome. I love seeing a lot of that. And uh, I'm also an actor myself. So one of the questions I wanted to ask was, what do you look for with your actors and actresses when you're casting them? And how involved you are know, you in the casting process? Uh, for this movie, I was really involved. And, and specifically because, you know, I was looking for a lot of vulnerability. Um, and I was looking for characters that felt authentic uh and felt like a friend group uh in today's kind of a friend group and what does that entail and how do they move and how do they interact with each other it was all pieces that i looked for in their auditions and and uh how they sort of bring their own voice to each character because you know 
I, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker that enjoys characters to sort of bring their own style, uh, their own sort of, you know, hipness, if you will, to that, to that character. I'm not beholden to the lines of what a writer writes, you know, somewhere distant. <laughs> you know, I want that character to sort of look at those lines and go, hey, is this something that they would say or that they would feel? Uh, and I think that I sort of look for that in their audition tapes and if they sort of bring some life to the lines. Um, and each one of these actors did that. They each had their own sort of unique perspective on what this character probably was 20 years ago and what this character is now um, and how that influences their world and their society as a group. And so to me, that was something I was looking for very heavily in the audition process. I, I definitely feel like the chemistry between the the characters on screen was great. I, I can tell you put a lot of um, effort into finding the right group of friends. And I was also curious, how much do you let them improvise? Yeah, I let I let them go. Um, you know, I, I'm a fan of getting one or two takes for me uh, where I sort of, you know, you have the studio right there going, we need to get these lines. And so I get those lines. Um, and then I do two or three takes where I just let them roll uh, and I let them just have fun. And I, I always put them in a, in a position where the camera is following them. They're not hitting marks or hitting areas where the camera will be, because I find that sometimes the actors aren't feeling the scene uh, and feeling the lines because they're too worried about hitting a certain mark. So I usually, you know, uh, encourage them to do what they're going to do. And, and we, the camera, the crew will find them. Um, and that usually allows them to be a little freer, a little bit more, um, you know, open with the material and, and a little riff can happen. So, um, yeah, I try to encourage it quite a bit. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I think, uh, part of the fun of acting is getting to try new things and maybe think outside the box. So that, that's really cool that you allow the actors to do that. Is there any specific message or takeaway you want the audience to get from this film? Yeah, I mean, I think the, I guess the broad message is that, you know, we don't always have to be on technology to see what's happening in the world. And I think you got to look at your friends, look at your family, uh, pay attention to what's the most important pieces of that. And that's uh, human interaction still. And I think human interaction, not that it's lost, but I think people tend to forget about that and forget that that's something that's key in our everyday existence. So uh, I think that's probably the broad takeaway. I feel like it definitely made me want to look more into what I'm agreeing to when I sign up for <laughs> new apps. Uh, yeah. And uh, I also wanted to ask you if you have any upcoming projects that you're like really excited about. Yeah, I just finished a movie in Puerto Rico with Frank Grillo. Um, it's called Year Two. It's basically a uh, werewolf pandemic. Um, and there's this moon that's come out and everyone that's in the moonlight starts wolfing out and Frank has to get through this downtown scenario back to his home, uh, and try to, you know, try to stop this phenomenon. Uh, and it's a, a really insane action horror mashup with the guys who built the predator who are built, who built all of our wolves for us. And, and it's all practical. So it's an insane mashup and, uh, Frank crushes it. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Do you have any interest in doing a sequel to Margo? Yeah, you know, I think I think there's a lot of room for Margo and where she could go. I mean, I mean, obviously she could go very mobile, um, and she could do a lot of things. So I think there's something exciting in that world that can be tapped into. Um, you know, I'd love it to to do that. I, I mean, it all depends on how well the movie is received and all, you know how that goes. So we'll see. But I I would love to dive into that world. Awesome. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of ideas you can explore with an AI oh, system, especially with how um, how much I think uh, today's society is kind of interested in that idea of an AI, you know, becoming super advanced like sure. that. Um, and yeah, there's a there's a lot of love in that for the, sort of genre for sure. Yeah, it, I mean, I've seen some like Joe Rogan podcast interviews that give me the creeps talking about AI and, <laughs> AI and different stuff like that. So. That made the movie interesting, that concept. Uh, and uh, before we wrap up, I, I wanted to ask a few more personal questions uh, because, again, I, I'm a aspiring filmmaker as well. How old were you, or do you remember how old you were when you knew that you wanted to be a director? Yeah, you know, I funny enough, I was probably like 
11, um, my dad showed me The Exorcist. Um, and I don't remember watching The Exorcist. I remember watching my dad's reactions to The Exorcist because my dad, to me, was like the ultimate tough guy. And to watch my dad literally look like he turned white as a sheep and wanted to crawl under the blanket that we were sitting in, it, it just, I immediately knew right there. And I was like, if I want to do whatever is causing my dad this much fear, like I want to get that kind of reaction out of people. And how do I do that? And I immediately asked how to, how I started asking all kinds of questions. And my dad went out and bought this old VHS camera and just said, here, go figure it out. Um, but like, that's where it started for me. And I think it's just, uh, it's always stuck with. Me. That's awesome. Uh, I, I definitely feel like, uh, watching films when I was a kid with my dad has a huge impact on how I look at movies as well and what movies I'm into. So I could definitely see that. Uh, before we go, do you have any advice for aspiring filmmakers? Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest like, advice I can give is to shoot, 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 and shoot, like get as much stuff as you can on camera, um, get what you're feeling out on camera. I feel like, you know, we have, we have everything we need now to make <clears throat> something at all times. And I think at any point where you're feeling like, hey, I need to get this off my chest or, or get something on camera, I think it's important to shoot it. Um, and I think those are the kind of things that I think I just didn't have growing up because we had to deal with all kinds of, you know, how do we edit it? How do we do this? I mean, now you just have the potential to shoot it, edit it, and, and put it in front of yourself and see how well you're doing. I think the more you can do that, the more you're going to hone in on your style your craft and, and what you want to deal with on the audience that's awesome great advice uh and uh i hope to see you on set someday it was great talking to you steven yeah man great talking to you as well thanks for having me yeah and uh margo is available to buy and rent september 9th on digital get it awesome man thank you i thanks, really dude. appreciate Talk you later. no problem All right, man. bye, bye.